How's it going? Welcome to our third Melody video. Uh, and today we are actually talking about a really cool uh, accordion solo, believe it or not. Uh, I'm a really big fan uh, of a couple things that are present in this solo. One, obviously, is that we are looking at another instrument. Um, I love transcribing other instruments on the bass. Um, what's so cool about it is, you know, some things that come naturally on other instruments may be a little bit more challenging to navigate on the bass, um, which might make you think differently about how to approach the instrument. You know, musicians always talk about this, how, you know, cross transcribing is such a cool way to look at your instrument a different way. Um, yeah, I've, I've done a yeah, saxophone solo um, from a David Bowie album, uh, and also a uh, really great guitar solo from this band XTC. So this is actually my first accordion solo I've ever transcribed. Um, so I'm excited to share it with you and talk over some of the details. Um, and the, you know, just generally, how do you transcribe a solo? Um, and uh, you know, you can change the tempo and the key with different uh, you know applications and um, really get it comfortable. Um, but before we get into it, uh, I wanted to mention the other thing that I'm really into. Um, oh, sorry, my phone just rung. I'm going to turn that on silent. Um, so, yeah, the other thing I'm really into is uh, short solos. Uh, pretty much every solo I end up really loving is in a vocal tune, and uh, it's just like 8 bars, 16 bars. Um, this is an 8-bar solo. And someone just gets in there and says what they need to say and gets out. You know, I really love that uh, about this solo. And uh, yeah, this great musician named Rob Berger, uh, who's playing uh, accordion on this track. Um, and uh, one of my favorite Ifo Donovan albums called Fossils. Um, so it's a song called Briar Rose, like you saw in the title. Um, and so first, I just want to talk about how I went ahead and approached this um pretty much i'm using an application on my phone you probably can't see the screen very well but it's called amazing slowdowner uh and i you know i added the link into the description um and the cool thing about this is um sorry just changing the speed here the cool thing about this app is that it syncs with spotify um not sure all of you have spotify accounts um i don't love the company myself but um, it's very well integrated with Amazing Slowdowner. You can make a playlist on Spotify and you go into the Amazing Slowdowner app and you can use that uh, playlist, any song on that playlist in Amazing Slowdowner. Um, so that's what I did here. You know, I just put Briar Rose on a playlist, put it into Amazing Slowdowner. And first thing I noticed when I, you know, when I put the track into the, the app, um, if you hear it, an A flat. So I was like, maybe not uh, for this class, you know? So the key is A flat. Um, and because this is our first solo on a different instrument, I was just like, off the bat, my first gut reaction was, we got to change the key. Uh, and that's totally fine to do, you know? Um, if there's a, you know, something lays out really challenging uh, on the bass from another instrument, feel free to learn it in a different key. It's honestly, it'd be good to learn this in all 12 keys. That's the cool thing about a transcription. You'll start approaching it differently depending on what key you're in. Um, but what I did is uh, in this app, you can actually lower the pitch. So I was choosing between A and G, you know, half step higher, half step lower, decided to go with G. So I lowered the pitch um, here from the top. A little bit lower, you know? Yeah, and obviously it loops there as well. Um, so, yeah, that's just a beautiful solo. Um, I think it's just so concise and so well composed. Um, and then, you know, obviously the next thing is, let me grab the bow here. The next thing is the accordion octave, uh, versus the bass octave. Um, I believe the octave it's in would be our kind of thumb position octave. 
You know, which we could do and talk about, but I, again, this is our third melody video. We haven't even talked about that position yet. So I was like, all right, let's bring it down. We'll drop it the octave. So it's down in our comfortable range of the bass, kind of where we've been exploring thus far. Um, so changing the key, changing the octave, all that stuff is fair game when you're transcribing. You don't have to do it exactly like the recording, you know, um, make it comfortable for yourself. Uh, it's still gonna be a challenge. It's still gonna be rewarding and useful, uh, even if you change it um, in small ways like that. Um, so let me just, uh, let me just, I just play along with this really quickly and I'll, you know, you'll kind of hear it happening on the bass in real time along with the track. Uh, and then we'll just talk about little things, um, little intricacies in each phrase. Um, yeah, that we can uh, kind of go over with you. So here we go. <laughs> So that's the solo. Again, like it's so concise and short and beautiful um, that I was just like, we got to do this this week. Uh, and especially because it fits so well with a bow. And that's another thing, you know, accordion, right? Great sustain, um, really vocal sound, an obvious choice to transcribe with a bow. Uh, and that's the awesome thing. You're transcribing from other instruments. Let's say you got a mandolin solo or something. Maybe try transcribing at pits, right? Shorter sustain, more like plunky. You know, you can get that sound, pits. And then instruments, you know, if you're transcribing a fiddle solo, obviously. Accordion, electric guitar, anything with more sustain, you can think more arco. Um, so, yeah. So just breaking down this, uh, this solo. One thing about it is that there's a lot of um, slurred notes. And this, you know, ties in perfectly with our exercise last week, slurring that G major scale. Um, slurring across strings and making sure you get a conti you know continuous sound. Um, so, you know that first phrase, that first three notes is just a G major arpeggio, um, but it starts on the D, so D G B, all on an up bow. One more time. And you'll notice how I'm not playing that G open. I'm playing it actually on the fifth fret on the D string. Playing it open would actually be a little bit harder because then you would have that D string ringing under it. Check it out. You know, and that's a little bit messy. So setting yourself up to play that G with your pinky and then the B with your second finger is the move. So second part, up bow on the C, and down bow, A, G, F. And that can be an open G there. All right, that's the first two chunks. Um, next, you're going right back up on an up bow, F, G, a, C, A. Ah, uh, sorry. All right, and then down bow, we're gonna play the G now on the D string. G, F, E, G, E. G, F, E, G, E. So those two phrases together. Whole thing thus far. Pretty sweet, right? Um, and then from there, so be. So you got the E, G, E, open D, C, D on the A string, 
G on the D string, and then another G on the D string. Again, we're using closed notes there. And that ties into not wanting to uh, play an open string on a long sustained note. You want to get that nice vibrato. On additionally, you can also play that D open. So it could either go like this. You know, or or yeah, I think I put it open in the score, but um, yeah, feel free to use either one, um, whatever you like better. Um, let's do the whole thing up to there, and then I'll play it along with the accordion. We're already more than halfway, I think. Um, and then it goes F E F F E C. That's um, up, up, down, up, down. And if you can notice, I'm doing a little hammer on on that F. That's E F E F E F E F E C. So a little bit of an E. And this is the thing with uh, transcribing a solo: you want it to get as close to the actual original recording as possible. If the accordion is going ya da da, you want to try to mimic that on the bass. You know, don't go da 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 not exactly the same thing as the recording. So try to get all those little details and those intricacies while you're transcribing. Uh, and that's, you know, if you're getting a bass solo or something, or if you're getting something on another instrument. Um, and then the last phrase, it goes uh, C, D, F, E, D, C, E. And the Boeing. Right. Up, down, up, down. Then fading really nicely off on that E. And there's another hammer on there, right? D, D, E. You want to get all those intricacies. Let's just listen to the accordion one more time and uh, see if you can hear where the... Uh, the phrase is getting a little bit of a crescendo. The volume is getting louder um, at the end of one of these phrases. And let's see if we can get it in. Yeah, so I think there's that, that second phrase, there's a crescendo going into it. Um, let me just play it and I'll, I'll show you where it is. Right there. And that's perfect because we're on an up bow, right? An up bow, it's much easier to get a nice dynamic crescendo when you're on an up bow and it's much easier to get a decrescendo when you're coming on a down bow, you know? So that's one thing to think about. Uh, one more time. Yeah, that's the full thing. Um, let me play it one more time with the accordion. Um, and uh, just so you know, I also have included um, different tracks uh, along with this video, all the way from 50% speed to 100% speed with the solo. So you can use those tracks uh, if you don't have an application uh, or if you want to use your computer instead, you can use those tracks um, to practice along with um, and really get all the details and intricacies in there. Um, 
Oh, one other thing, I also included the link to a computer application that I really like called Transcribe. I'm very picky. I use Amazing Slowdowner on my phone and Transcribe on my computer. Transcribe has a really nice visual aspect. You can, you can actually see the waveform, um, like you can see the music physically, and you can drag uh, into different sections you want to go into. Um, so I like Transcribe on the computer, Amazing Slowdowner on the phone. You can do one of the other for, for either one, though I do recommend Amazing Slowdowner on the phone uh, if you can sync it up with Spotify. Um, this may sound like jumble to some of you, but for some of you, I know it's important, so I wanted to say it. Um, yeah, so let me just play this solo. Maybe, maybe I'll just show you like maybe how I would practice it. Play it three times and it'll loop, you know, so I don't even have to worry about the audio. Um, and then we'll call it a day. the accordion solo on Briar Rose. I really recommend checking out that full album too, Fossils by Efo Donovan. Um, totally awesome record and uh, a lot of other beautiful music and beautiful musicians on the album. Um, so yeah, feel free to message with any questions, obviously, um, and uh, have fun with the solo. Uh, it's, it's challenging, but um, I think at least the range is something you're familiar with. Um, and we've already worked a little bit with the slurred bowing um, so take it really slow. Use that 50% track or slow it down to 50% and just slowly but surely get your ear accustomed to it. You know, eventually you won't even need the sheet music for those of you who have the notation, you know, you'll memorize it. Um, and then you can really start getting into the intricacies then. So thanks so much everyone. And uh, next week we're actually going to be talking about sound setup, uh, how to get a good sound on the bass when you plug it into an amp or a preamp. Uh, and I have a couple different, um, tools that we can use and talk about. So I'll see you then, everyone, and uh, enjoy playing this beautiful solo. <laughs>